Hi, it's Rob Moore here. Now they say, don't they, that being a jack of all trades and a master of none is often a bad thing. And in focus, in your strategy, your business, that's often true. However, a marketing mentor of mine about nine years ago said something to me which totally changed my mindset when it came to generating leads for my business or having multiple streams of income. And it challenges the status quo of jack of all trades, master of none. So a bit of context. Uh, Mark and I bought 20 properties in our first year in being property investors together, about another 30 in our second year. So there was around about 50 in the first two years and 50 of those deals were from estate agents. And so we thought we were the Don Juan Mafia of buying properties in Peterborough and that every estate agent knew us. Uh, now, most estate agents did, but half of them thought we were twats. Um, uh, but I'll go, that's another video for another story. Um, so we were getting all these deals from estate agents and hey, we were doing well. However, my marketing mentor said to me, it's you're far better getting 50 properties from 50 different marketing sources and strategies than 50 from one. And I was like, well, surely not. Surely it's better to get great at something, to be the best at sourcing deals from estate agents. And he said, yes, but what if the estate agent regulations change? Now, if you think about it, when, um, uh, yeah, thank you, David, for your feedback. He said only half the estate agents thought we were twats. Yes. <laughs> now, um, with estate, buying this deals from a estate agency is a great thing. Hey, look, if you're not a property investor and you follow my work, you should be, because you can walk into an estate agent for free. They'll come and do viewings for you and won't charge you an hourly rate. Um, you can go and view properties and never buy, and they'll never charge you any fees, so you can kind of waste their time and they don't get remunerated for it. Then when you finally do buy a property, you can get it at discount, and the seller pays the fees. But what's to stop an estate agent uh, saying, actually, I'm going to charge the buyer the fees, and you could all of a sudden get charged one, two or three percent for buying a property and the vendor could be charged and the buyer could be charged. Now, I don't want that to be the case, but if that happened, we wouldn't get 50 deals in two years from estate agents. We might get five and then we can't scale. So you want to be doing leaflets. You want to be doing postcards. You want to be doing gold mine ads. You want to be doing newspaper ads. Uh, you know, the, the, you want to kind of be writing letters and hand delivering them. You've been, you want to be going to auctions. You want to be trying to find pop properties through probate. You want multiple marketing strategies. Okay, so property is the analogy, because whether you into property or not, it's the same thing. So I'm going to challenge you to expand your scope of your marketing, looking at different forms of lead generation. Now, it's not as hard as you think. I'll give you some examples of how you can leverage your time in a moment. But, you know, a lot of people who start business, and often this is a sign that they're a small business. They could be a good small business, but a small business is when they say things like, hey, I just get word of mouth marketing. I don't do any marketing. I just get referrals and word of mouth. And whilst that's great to be in that position, you can't just get word of mouth marketing when you scale. If you did, Coca-Cola wouldn't spend billions and billions and billions on advertising. So if you're just getting word of mouth, it probably means you're small. And what if you have um, a disruption to your industry or you have a bit of bad PR and you don't get word of mouth anymore? You don't get business anymore. So what you want to do is look at probably three, three main uh, marketing strategies to focus on. Because you can't start with 20 and focus one twenty of the time on them all. Otherwise, you never get anywhere. Uh, and you want to try and master one to three. And then as soon as you've mastered one to three or systemized one to three, then you bring in a new one, a new one, a new one, a new one, a new one until you build up to 10 or 20 marketing um, strategies. And you have multiple streams of property leads, therefore multiple streams of business leads, therefore multiple streams of income. Now, what you can do in the technology world we're in is you can repurpose your information across multimedia. So, for example, I'm doing this podcast. If you're listening on the audio, then you're hearing me, which we might then put onto Stitcher. We might add onto iTunes. It might be on SoundCloud. Then it may be hosted on a website for you to download. If you're watching the live video, then you're seeing me do it live. This live video, well, the, the, um, I don't know how it works because uh, one of my um, outsourcers does this for me, but he takes the uh, video and he extracts it and then he puts it onto YouTube. And then it's on YouTube and he, he'll put it on my LinkedIn profile. And um, you know, he may put it in some of my other social media profiles. It might take the best minute. Uh, some people say my video should be shorter. I'm trying. This will be shorter. And he might put that on Instagram and he might take the best two and a half minutes and put that on Twitter. And then he might get it transcribed so that there's actually a, you know, a blog or an article on it. And that way, my same use of time, five to 25 minutes, 
is across seven or eight marketing platforms. And then in the future, there's going to be new marketing platforms we don't even know about yet. So you get to leverage that. Now, the next thing is, what you want to do is, in your mind or in some kind of notebook, you just want to think, what am I doing that could be marketing or promotion? Take your phone, take your audio podcast equipment with you, and literally do a little um, diary on the wall of what you do. Now, I mentor someone from Strictly Come Dancing who's you know, one of the best dancers on the show. He's been right up there for many years. And he's got so many interesting things that he does. I mean, he meets amazing celebrities. He was, he was pulled to go on stage with uh, Russell Brand when he was one, at one of Russell Brand's gigs. And everywhere in his life, some interesting stuff's happening. And, and like I used to in the past, he's probably thinking, oh, that would have been good to do a live video afterwards when it's gone. Now, some of these big American celebrities, they're great at taking a film crew with them or their iPhone. And they're doing stuff and they're thinking, this could be good marketing for my YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, etc. And so they'll do a little video of it. And then you pass it to an outsourcer. And the outsourcer makes sure it can go across multimedia and then it can be transcribed. And then, bang, you have similar marketing messages across all your platforms. Now, Sam Brown. Hi, Sam. Thanks for tuning in. Has just asked, does anyone complain about the same content being everywhere? Well, if no one's complaining about your content being everywhere, then it isn't out there enough. And you know I get a few people who moan about me when I launch my book or launch a podcast. Oh, all you see is Rob's big ginger beard everywhere. Well, I'd rather you seeing me too much than not enough. So a lot of that is just our personal feeling. And so I'd rather it be too much. Um, but also, you find that there's a very different fraternity on LinkedIn as there is in Facebook. Sam, you're a, a prolific member in 4N and also Progressive Property. And you'll know there's different people in those groups. And there's a kind of a different outlook. And then Twitter, there'll be a different kind of following. So what you want to do is um, kind of just get it out there. Not worry too much. Because I find, for example, the conversations I have on LinkedIn are really different to the conversations I have in the progressive group that are really different to the ones I have in, say, for example, the 4N group. So I'd say get it out there. Now, if you get a load of feedback that people are saying, hey, you know, you're, you're just copy and pasting the same content across groups, then obviously you need to think about that. It's probably wise to drip feed the timing of it. So let's say, for example, you're watching this live video. Well, the audio will come out sometimes five, seven days later, or I'll reverse it and do it the other way around. I'll record the video and the audio first. Uh, the transcription into a blog might come three or four weeks later. And when I post in different communities on social media, I make sure that they're one or two or three days apart. And the content is 30 or 40% different. And that's good for the search engines, but it's also good for people not thinking it's the same content. Um, and then I'll gear it if it's in a business group or a property group. You know, you gear the content specific for that audience. And then I think that, you know, that you, you solve that problem. But if you look at the big American, you know, social media brand experts, you know, who have 750,000 or two or five million followers, you're seeing them all over the place. And um, hey, I don't know if, if you don't want to grow your business. <laughs> then don't get, don't get it out across all the profiles, but I would definitely encourage you to do that. Now, also, you, you know, social media and online is just one form of advertising. Of course, you've got sponsoring events. You've got the exhibitions. You know, for example, in property, there's the big property investor show. There's landlord shows. Um, you've got newspaper advertising, magazine advertising. You've got joint ventures between other people who have big databases or um, could cross-promote you well. For example, we often cross-promote property with personal development or business. And, you know, we sort of exchange messages to people who are in similar fields. So often you're just looking at the same small pond all the time, whereas there are many ponds out there that you're not even fishing in. And what you find is over time when you build these multiple channels is you're de-risked from any regulation or um, just change in the way the market moves and people interact. You know, a lot of people for a few years have been saying Twitter's dead. Twitter isn't dead, but maybe it's not as prolific as it used to be. Uh, also, when it comes to having mar multiple marketing channels, and this is an important bit, so I'm glad that we pushed through this and stayed. A lot of data you don't own. So you don't own your Facebook friends. You know, Facebook owns that data. You don't have their contact details. You don't own the Twitter data. You own your email data to email subscribers. So what you want to do over time is make sure that on platforms where you don't own the data or the customer information, you bring them into platforms that you do. 
So one of the people who I think is the best at this is Ty Lopez. He's always saying, hey, look, if you follow me on Twitter, when you're following me on Facebook already, um, I'll enter you into one of my competitions to win a Mustang or win a, an iPad or something like that. And he knows that ultimately it's great to have millions of followers everywhere. But if Facebook close or change the rules or whatever, then you're completely vulnerable and you don't control the information. Whereas if you move them onto your email database or if there are any other platforms where you own the data where... Um, you know, the, the platform can't, don't have control. Uh, as Samantha said, you're building your list, you're building a database, your followers. Now, they're your followers, they're your fans. Now, one of the things that irked a lot of people, myself included, it, who have Facebook pages is, you know, you can build marketing campaigns and you can ultimately pay uh, lead generation to get likes. And um, in the early days of a page, if you posted, everyone would see your post. And then what Facebook did was they reduced the reach as more and more people got on Facebook. And now sometimes only two or three or five percent of the people that are following you on your page, which have chosen to follow you, they want to follow you, are seeing your message. And then what they'll do is they'll make you pay to reach the other 95 percent. Kind of a bit naughty. Hey, I'm not complaining, though, Mr. Zuckerberg, because, you know, we've done well together. But it isn't, you know, but that's their business model and how, you know, hey, whatever. So, you know, but marketers have spent tens and hundreds of thousands of pounds to build a million followers and then they don't own them and now they can't reach them and they've got to pay to reach them. So if you had them in your email subscriber database or you had their contact information so you could phone them, contact them, meet them, then you don't have that problem. OK, so Khadija has said, I've had to leverage so many other tasks to free up time for my social media splurging. <laughs> it can be so time consuming. It can be for sure. So this is why you always want to think net time leverage, no extra time leverage. So if you're doing something, can you repurpose it into five or seven other formats? That's why I like to speak, whether it's in the video here or in the audio here, because the video can be transcribed into audio, which can be transcribed into text. And then my outsourcers can take the best quotes and have them on image quotes. Whereas if I write, written word can't then be put into video and audio as easily because I've got to do the thing again. So just think when you start your day, Khadija and everybody else, how can I best use my time so that I can use this across multiple marketing channels? So what we did when we got to 50 properties and thought we were the Donald Hunt Mafia of Peterborough, so we started doing leaflets, we started doing postcards, we started putting some small test ads in newspapers, we started write, handwriting letters and then photocopying the handwritten letters and sending them out and going to auctions and broadening our marketing horizons. And um, there's a, a, a great strategy called the aging strategy where you save all the local newspapers with the ads in for people to sell or rent their house. And you wait to, for them to get three or four months old. And then you go from the bottom and phone up the bottom ones because the leads have uh, matured and got more motivated. Uh, and then once we had, what, you know, eight or nine channels, you know, we felt like we were de-risked. And if one channel dried up, we still had seven or eight because the world changes all the time. You know, for events at the moment, a lot of people are doing Facebook ads to event registration to event. Now, in the past, we were doing sort of a um, webinar to event and then we were doing email to event. Then we were doing selling a book and giving tickets to an event. And there are four different ways of hoping to invite someone to an event. And the efficacy and how, you know, um, cost effective they are and the return on investment of them changes all the time. And it's seasonal and somewhat better than others at different times of the year. So. A, B, T, always be testing and have multiple streams of leads, which equal, mul equal multiple streams of income. All right, so that was only a 14-minute video, which is just like a short two-minute one for me. Thanks for tuning in. If you don't risk anything, you risk everything. Build up your marketing channels to have security, longevity, scalability, and multiple streams of income.